Yes, you're in the right place. Welcome to week seven of the NFL season. This is FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. I'm your host, Lisa Kearney, hanging out with you inside the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands. We are always so psyched to be here, and we have so much to get to here. We're making picks. We're bringing you upset specials and, of course, best bets as well. So let's get the whole team in here, uh, guys. From our Los Angeles studio, what's up? Our betting experts, Dave Weaver, along, for, along with former NFL wide receiver and Super Bowl champion in James Jones, my guys. And as always, joining us from Pittsburgh Sports Talk, radio host Andrew Filipponi and the face of Marquee Sports Network there in Chicago. Hey, hey, Cole Wright. All right, you guys, it's week seven. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, so let's kick this thing off with two teams that could make a deep playoff run. The 4-2 and two Chiefs at the 3-3 three and three Niners. These two teams are solid on opposite sides of the ball, right? The Kansas City offense is clicking. Sits as the top scoring team in the league with nearly 30 points per game. Then you look at San Francisco's defense, second in the NFL, giving up less than 15 points per game. So guys, let's do what we do. Let's bet it. James, I'm going to get your unique player perspective here on this game in just a moment. But Dave and Pony, I'm going to start with you guys. Dave, the Chiefs coming off that loss, they're two and a half point road favorites here. Who do you like? I, I like the Niners. You know, the, there are certainly some uh, revenge on the Ooh. line here going three years back to that Super Bowl where they lost to the Chiefs having that 10-point lead with about six minutes to go. So they've been wait, waiting a long time to have an opportunity to get back against the uh, the Chiefs here. And look at the two teams that the Chiefs lost to. You know, they lost to the Bills and Colts, teams that have that front four that can put the pressure on Mahomes. And that's what San Francisco is going to be able to do here with their 23 sacks. So I think there's a big revenge spot for the Niners starting to show off hot I like it reason number one they're going to get their big studs back Trent Williams and Nick Bosa it looks like both of those players are going to give it a go the 49ers are a better team a much better team at home against the spread they've won their last six and as far as Kansas City goes look say what you will about Mahomes and Kelsey and what they do offensively but this secondary They've really missed Honey Badger. They've been one of the most vulnerable teams against the pass. So in my opinion, the wrong team is favored. I'm going to take San Francisco, Lisa, as a money line moneymaker plus 128. Sorry. You know what? I, you don't even have to apologize. You know what? This week we got some redeeming to do. You're not wrong there, Pony. Uh, James, but I want you to, to, to weigh in here with your unique player perspective on this matchup. Dominant offense versus dominant defense. Which one has the advantage, James? Well, my guys sound like they've been in the locker room with me, right? Because that's the take I'm taking, right? You talking about the Niners at home, they are a much different football team, right? You talking about a really good defense, especially with that crowd behind you. You're going to get Bosa back. I believe why they rest him last week, they thought they could handle the Falcons. They thought wrong, but they wanted him to be fresh for this game, right? Did we all see Von Miller last game, right? He wrecked that game, had Patty Mahomes off the spot. That's the same thing Nick Bosa is about to do, right? This Niner defense flies around. They play extremely fast. And this Niners offense is just violent, really physical, right? The Chiefs have not seen an offense like the Niners offense, right? You got Debo. You got this O-line. You're going to get Big Trent back. I think it's going to be some big, big problems for Kansas City. They could be walking out of there with an L against this San Francisco 49ers team why we play the games guys right <laughs> and now we have to give a little love to the five and one giants what a start to this season they're in jacksonville taking on those two and four jags new york has been riding the success of saquon barkley we've been seeing it every single sunday he leads the nfl in total yards now as for the jags they started two and one with their defense forcing eight turnovers you're sitting there going how did they start well the eight turnovers they've lost three in a row since then forcing just one turnover in that span. Dave and Cole, this game is for you. We're going to start here. Cole, the Giants, a three-point road underdogs. How do you feel about this game? 
Well, I feel good about it. Just like uh, James in that outfit that he's uh, going to a job interview at Scotland Yard with. But uh, despite their two wins coming versus winning teams, the Jags, as we can see, they're not really great at playing tackle football. They dropped three in a row, and two of those three have come versus division opponents. Plus, they scored seven points or less in the fourth quarter in every single game this season but one. And you got to close, and you got to keep it close. And Big Blue, they've been really good at doing both of those. Every win so far this year for them has been decided by one score in three of the five uh, by four points or fewer. And Brian Dayball and company, well, they have the league's fourth best run offense. And Saquon Barkley, Lisa, like you said, he's been hanging the moon. He's second in rushing yards behind Nick Chubb, and he's uh, looking to take over that lead. So expect some big blue fireworks. G-Man, they moved to 6-1 and one with a 24-13 win. Yeah, I think Pony said it last week. This team gets no respect on the line. They were like underdogs. They win. They're underdogs here. They're going to win. Look, the, the Jags have lost 18 games in a row to the NFC. Not eight. 18 straight losses to NFC opponents. And in the last 40 games against the NFC, they're 6-34 and 34 against the spread. Barkley's amazing. Yards uh, after contact, second most behind Josh Jacobs, 301 yards. So, you know, remember James said this when he saw them beat the Packers. They run three plays, but you know what's coming at you, and you still can't stop them. So I think yep. the Jags know. Barkley is going to bring it, and I don't think they're going to be able to stop him. So go, go ahead and give me the plus three as well. By, by the way, Lisa, Danny Dimes, 12-4 and four against the spread as a road dog. That is exactly what I started writing down off of that, <laughs> off of that graphic. That, that's incredible. Uh, James, the Giants sitting there is fi at 5-1. and one. They're underdogs against these Jags. How do players respond if they feel like they're being a bit disrespected going into this next matchup? Well, I mean, I mean, that's the number one thing about a professional athlete, right? And I know Cole was going to come out my turtleneck swag, but he'll have a turtleneck <laughs> on here soon. But that is the number one thing that you do not want to do. You do not want to be disrespected, right? That, that gets under your blood right there. You do not want that to happen, right? So I can see these Jacksonville Jaguars battling back and really coming out here and getting a big-time win. I'm sitting here right now. You cannot convince me to believe in Danny Dimes. You just can't. You cannot convince me to believe in him, right? So I'm still one of those guys who, yes, I've seen the Giants win week after week after week, win close ball games. This coaching staff, Brian Dayball and this coaching staff, is coaching their tails off. You are exactly right. They've been winning with three plays, and people cannot stop them. But all of a sudden, right, these lads, this winning streak, we ain't picked them to win yet, right? And now we are picking them to win. Win, and it's not going to happen. But you can't not – this cannot continue to keep going on, them beating people and with simple, simple plays. I just don't think it happens. I think Jacksonville is going to handle some business. All right. You know what? He just needs to cover three. Eh? That, that stat against the spread, man, that's pretty impressive uh, for there for Danny Dimes. We'll see how that one goes, but let's move on to this next one here. Four and two Cowboys hosting the one and four Lions. Big news for Dallas. Dak Prescott is expected to start after missing the past five games with that fractured right thumb. Cowboys went four and one in that stretch, now facing the Lions coming off their bye. Uh, you can bet the defense was a big focus because they're currently giving up 34 points per game, most in the league by nearly a touchdown. Guys, not a small number there. Cole and Pony, let's get your picks first. Cole, the Cowboys, seven-point favorites. What do you think about this one? I think I feel good about it because Rain Dakota Prescott making that triumphant return to the Dallas Cowboys lineup. And like his owner, Jerry Jones, told Bob Kraft, don't F with me. And uh, the Lions, <laughs> they won't be able to do that if uh, Dakota Prescott, if he minimizes some of those mistakes. Uh, and uh, his only game of the year, one pick and a pair of sacks and the Elliott Pollard combo, well, it should help him clean things up just a little bit because they've combined for just under 700 yards via the rush. And defensively, while Detroit is going to try to run their offense to avoid Parsons and Diggs, that'll allow Donovan Wilson and Leighton Vanderesh one and two on the tackles list for Dallas to continue to rack them up. They have 83 combined. So you know what? I see Dallas uh, with easy money in this victory, 28 to 14. They get to win. I don't. I'm not even sure they win, to be quite honest wow. with you, Cole. I look at the situation with Dallas. They haven't scored more than 25 points in a game yet this year. Now, we know the only time we saw Dak was against Tampa, and they've got one of the better defenses in the league. But how about time for an adjustment? This line is too big for an NFL game 
where you know the Lions can score points. And the question with Dallas is, how do they play with Dak Prescott? Their offensive line has the worst pass-blocking win rate in the NFL. So are they going to keep getting rid of the ball fast like they did with Cooper Rush? If they ask Prescott to sit back there and make plays, I'm sorry. I think guys like Aiden Hutchinson are going to have a field day, and that's going to keep Detroit competitive. I think they might even win. James, I'm not even convinced the right quarterback starting in this game. I might have given Cooper Rush the start and allowed for Dak to get completely healthy after the bye week. I'm not going to I'm not going to James and I talked about this two weeks ago. Yes, yeah. James, right? We were yeah. talking about this. Is there going to be a quarterback controversy? Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Number one, this is Dak Prescott's team. But number two, to your last point, yes, I probably would have started Cooper Rush because they are going to destroy the Detroit Lions, right? The Detroit Lions, I don't know where they're going to find more than 17 points against this Dallas Cowboys defense, right? And the formula is the formula now. They found the formula with Cooper Rush. So just because Dak Prescott is coming back, don't use the formula. Run the football, force them to drop a safety down in the box, get your one-on-one -on -one coverage, get the ball out of your hands fast. It is okay to punt. Your defense will get you some turnovers and create you some short fields. And that's how the Dallas Cowboys been winning, right? Nothing changes with Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is a much better quarterback than Cooper Rush, right? So those receivers are in much better hands right now with Dak Prescott being able to throw them open and being able to put the ball in certain spots. But do not get past happy. I'm with you. Do not get past happy and have him sit in this pocket like his old line is great. His old line is not great. Move him. Get him outside the pocket. Get the ball out of his hands fast, just like you did Cooper Rush, and hand the ball off to Zeke and Tony Pollard. And I'm with Cole. This one ain't going to be close. Let him eat. All right, guys, those are just a few of the best matchups we have ahead of us here in week seven. So much more to come here to get you ready. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app now so you can place your bets right from your phone in real time with our experts' advice. It's why we're here. New users, it gets better because FanDuel is giving you up to 1000 bucks back if you don't win your first bet. Just get the app, sign up for your new account using the promo code right there on your screen. More ways. 1000 again that's more ways 1000 sign up with this code and if you don't win that first bet you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets yes it's that easy thank you for playing with us And we move on now because you're in the game, ready to play. You have your app fired up, and we have so much more to get to here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win, including Action Network's Chad Millman picking underdogs that are going to hit this week. You have to hear what he has to say. He's 4-1 and one with his picks on this show the last two weeks, so get your app ready to plug in his picks. More Ways to Win is coming right back. Here we are rolling on here on More Ways to Win. Thank you for hanging with us here in Week 7. We got underdogs, favorites. Which one should you bet? Well, let me answer that for you. Both. Let's get to it. You just have to find the best value, right? Okay, here it is. I'm going to bring in two experts who are going to give you their best bets for each. Cole will be focusing on the two favorites. And our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Great having Chad back with us here in Week 7. Chief Content Officer of the Action Network, Chad, is 4-1 and one the last two weeks on this show, including 2-0 and oh last week. Chad, uh, hold on to your picks for just a second. Cole is going to start us off here with your favorite favorite. Favorites, Cole, for week seven. Who do you like? Well, hopefully Chad's in approval here because he's like a young Miss Cleo. And I'm not going to lie, the Baltimore Ravens, well, they, they've ganked me more than a few times already this season. But scared money, as the saying goes, don't make money. And the Ravens, well, they're looking to avenge that two-point loss from last December versus Cleveland. And they'll need to improve vastly when it comes to their defensive exploits, especially in the fourth quarter because get a load of this. They've been scored four, outscored 45-10. to 10 in the fourth in their three losses and even in their wins outscored in that last quarter 19 to 12 and uh nick chubb he's going to be more than a litmus test for baltimore defensively ravens their top 10 offense i think it's going to be proved to be too much for the browns and their 26th ranked d the ravens uh they're going to get back in my good graces this week 27 to 17. fingers crossed on this one All right, Chad, let's hit an underdog that you like to cover. And we're going to get back to all these in just a moment. But who do you like? Lisa, we have said on this show, the theme is always you got to do ugly things if you want to be betting underdogs. What is uglier, 
than betting on a team whose ownership is in disarray starting a backup quarterback against the reigning NFL MVP. I am talking about the Washington Commanders, plus five and a half, plus four and a half against the Green Bay Packers. Look, we can talk about Taylor uh, Taylor Heineke in a second, but if we're just talking about defenses, which is where we can get the best comparisons right now, these are two mediocre to bad units that are going against each other. And if you think about the metrics that betters like the most, we're talking about the ability to pressure the passer. Washington is actually better than Green Bay in this spot. And the one thing we know Aaron Rodgers is vulnerable to is pressure without blitzing. That's what Washington can do. And then we can talk about Taylor Heineke. Look, he is equal to Carson Wentz in QBR for his career, in yards per pass attempt for his career. He is better at completion percentage and he's more mobile. This line should be closer to three. You're getting the bounce because of the Packers being who they are and Washington being who they are. Take Washington. Hmm. All right, well, we got to get Cole back in here because Cole sees this thing going way differently. Uh, uh, Cole, so explain your side here, your favorite well, favorite. Chad. Chad, 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 uh, last week you hit the nail on the head. You picked Pittsburgh and Seattle. Uh, kudos to you there. That was sound advice. But this week, I'm going to have to check that cup and see what's in there because uh, this begins two of three versus sub-500 opposition for the Green Bay Packers. And it also kicks off an uncharacteristic three-game road trip away from Lambeau Field. Green Bay just one of four teams with that on their schedule this year. And the Packers, uh, get a load of this. They have only one touchdown in the last six quarters of football that's alarming but uh the good news for a, a ron is that the commanders they haven't been able to command their defense they've allowed over three scores per game on average in the pack well they've been held to 20 or fewer three times so uh, this is what they always call that get right game green bay and aaron well they get back in the win column and move above 500 34 21 you can take it to the bank I love that both of you guys were on that game. Chad, give me another underdog that you like here. Well, first of all, let me just say to Cole, it's hard for the Packers to get right when so much is wrong, which is why you should yeah. be on Washington right now. The other game I like, uh, the Houston Texans plus seven against the Las Vegas Raiders. This is the classic pros Joe's game. Right now, you've got about 70% of the tickets. That is usually the public, the Joe public group coming in on the Raiders. Meanwhile, you've got 85% of the money. That is the professional group coming in on the Texans. In those scenarios, you want to follow the money. There's no reason for the Raiders in any scenario to be a touchdown favorite against anyone. They are not a very good football team right now. Statistically, these two teams are evenly matched in every category. You are paying a huge premium by betting on the Raiders at seven points. It's too much of a premium. You got to take the Texans at plus seven. That is way too big of a number. Okay, great stuff, Chad. All right, Cole, a quick recap of your two favorite favorites here for week seven. You like Baltimore Winners. at home giving the points against Cleveland. Winners right there. Green Bay on the road <laughs> giving the points to Washington. So there you see right there on the beautiful graphic, Cole's week seven favorite favorites. And conversely, here's Chad's look at the dogs. Chad, two dogs that you really like here. Washington getting the points in Green Bay. Stated a your case very nicely. Uh, also, the Texans getting points at the Raiders. So book it. Get to your FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. You can click the buttons, and in it goes right into your card. I like to say it's easier than Amazon. Awesome stuff, you guys. Uh, you can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And a reminder, don't forget forget you can get more of chat's insights by listening to the favorites podcast wherever you get your podcast also make sure to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app as well as the Action Network app to uh, get your expert picks live scores and stats thanks guys and Chad we will see you right back here next week all right, moving on here on More Ways to Win. You can keep the fun going because along with making it rain with your favorites and underdog bets, you can also win part of a $10,000 prize pool just by answering a few questions about the games this week. How? Well, let's ride. GMC is teaming up with FanDuel for a free-to-play GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. All you have to do is log on to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber before the early games kick off on Sunday. 
just got to answer some questions about the NFL matchups. The more answers you get right, the higher you move up the mountain. Fans who get every answer right will reach the summit and win a share of the $10,000 prize paid in site credit. So get in there, get into the app, make sure to enter the free GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest. You can do it right now. And if you don't win this week, it's all good. You can enter every week of the NFL season to win a share of the $10,000 prize pool. Have fun and all as always, good luck with these contests. Now, we've loaded you up with underdogs and favorite picks, but we have so much more here on this show. Next up, our experts battle our ex-player in picking some of their favorite games, including the Jets and the Ravens. They're going to explain that, plus best bets of the week. See which bets our experts say are locks for week seven. We'll be right back here on More Ways to Win. Welcome back, everybody. This is FanDuel TV. Yes, you're in the right place. We're betting football. You're welcome, America. So let's get to it. It's week seven. We're pitting our experts versus our ex-player in a betting debate based on eye test and experience. Each of our betting experts are going to go toe-to-toe with James, nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ, knows his stuff. (laughs) They're going to state their case, stand by their story, and then we're going to settle up next week. Deal? Okay, guys, let's do it. We're starting our expert versus ex-player challenge with a battle for first place in the AFC South. Here it is, the 3-2-1 and one Colts in Tennessee taking on the 3-2 and two Titans. Now, Titans won this matchup in Indy back in week four. 24-17 was the final there. Colts are getting two and a half points on the road this go-around. Dave, who do you like? I like Matty Ice because he is back. You oh. saw what happened last week, 42 Ooh. for 58, 389 yards, Three touchdowns, and look, you know, it's probably too early to say that the division is on the line in week number seven, but you can't let a divisional opponent beat you twice. So this, to me, is a must-win game for the Colts. The receivers are finally starting to get healthy. Alec Pierce, their rookie, is really coming around. So I think the passing game is going to be able to defeat this uh, Tennessee secondary here. I think Matty Ice just took him a little while to get familiar with this new system after being in Atlanta for so many years. I think he's finally got things figured out, and this offense is going to put up a ton of points. We start Yay to be, or nay? We're starting to become friends. There we go. Man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're starting to become friends <laughs> because I'm with you, right? I believe, number one, Matty Ice is the best quarterback on the football field. I'm taking Matty Ice over Ryan Tannehill any day of the week, and he's starting to get in rhythm, right? Him and Frank Reich, they're starting to figure out what they like to do on the offensive side of the ball. Matty Ice is starting to get it cooking, right? I love what the Colts are doing right now. They're finding ways to win tough games. They won a tough one against Kansas City. They just found a way to win a tough one against a division opponent. They're making plays when they have to make plays. I love what I'm seeing from the Colts. I think it continues. I like Matty Ice. I believe in Matty Ice more than I believe in Ryan Tannehill making plays in this ball game. I'm taking the Colts. I love that moment between you two. Uh, did we just become best friends? I think so. All right. Pony is the expert for our next game. And NFC, AFC, excuse me, North Divisional matchup. We got Browns. We got Ravens. Cleveland is 2-4 and four on this three great game losing streak. The 3-3 three and three Ravens have had a double-digit fourth quarter lead in all three of their losses, including against the Giants last week. Pony, the Ravens, six-and-a-half point home favorites. How are you betting it? Line's too big. They needed a last-second field goal to beat another division rival, uh, Cincinnati, and it's almost Halloween, and yet the Ravens still have not covered a spread at home all season. They've either played close or they've lost outright, and I can promise you Nick Chubb isn't going to touch the ball only 12 times in this game like he did last week against New England. I'm pretty sure the Browns will hang around in this game, so I'm going to take Cleveland. I am going to say that the Baltimore Ravens finally play four quarters. They finished the fourth quarter, right? It's crazy because you look at this Baltimore Ravens team and you see them at three and three, and I sit here and I say, are they the best team in football? Because you're beating arguably the best team in football, the Buffalo Bills, 20 to three. You don't finish the fourth quarter in that game. They were dominating really good football teams. The Dolphins are so-called a good football team. You're up 21, you give that one up. This team can easily be 6-0 
if they finish the fourth quarter. This week they finished the fourth quarter. I believe they are fixing that right now in these meetings, understanding if we are going to be a Super Bowl caliber team, we must play four quarters. It happens this week. The Baltimore Ravens play four quarters. I don't think this one is going to be close. Cleveland has just been going like this, like this, like this, with Jacoby Brissett at the quarterback <laughs> position. I don't see it changing. To be continued, uh, Cole is tapping in for Pony for this one. The 4-2 and two Jets at the 2-4 and four Broncos. These are two teams, uh, you know, James just did this. These two teams are going in opposite directions <laughs> as well here. New York has won three in a row, is undefeated on the road this year. The Broncos have lost three in a row. They're averaging 15.2 points per game, the lowest in the NFL. And if my memory serves me correctly, with the highest paid quarterback in NFL history, uh, Cole just Despite all that, the Broncos a one-point home favorite. It is the tightest line of the week. Yeah, at least you don't have to grease the skids for me in favor of Denver <laughs> because I already don't believe in Mr. Unlimited because I told you I'd never pick Russell Wilson for the rest of the season, and I'm sticking to that one because uh, the defense, they've been good, but the offense has been abysmal in Denver. And let Russ cook, well, the dude might actually burn the whole house down because in six games he's been sacked 20 times and he's been picked off thrice in just one game with multiple passing touchdowns and that as well was in a losing effort so the Jets they're going to lean into that top 10 defense because uh, that's been their calling card right now and uh, last week we know what Sauce Gardner was able to do James it was cheese this week maybe it's some Rocky Mountain oysters because uh, they reverse the tables and they get the win in this one 21 to 20 Broncos country let's ride <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I finally get to disagree with you, right? Because, number what? one, I agree with you on one thing. I'm not a believer in Russell Wilson right now in this offense neither. But what You're I am a Jets. believer in is this defense, right? This defense just came playing a really good offense in the Chargers. Justin Herbert threw the ball 50-plus times. Zero. Zero touchdowns, right? This defense is for real. I'm sitting over here, Cole, as I talk to you and Lisa, and I'm trying to figure out where – do the Jets score 14 points from against a Denver Broncos defense at home that just got their best defender in Simmons back in the back end? This defense is lights out. They make it extremely hard on the Jets. Russ, yeah, he going to be cooking, but he only got to cook up about 13 to 15 points anyway to win this one, Cole. I like the Broncos at home strictly because the Jets are not going to be able to score on this Broncos defense. Wait, so that turtleneck's cutting off the circulation. J <laughs> That's all he's been cooking. He's only been serving appetizer. He's only been given 13 to 15 points. Uh, so he's been cooking. It's just been uh, uh, not quite enough. All right, great stuff by you guys. We'll see how week seven plays out. It's about to kick off with both the Jets and the Giants on the road this week. But you can still root for them or your favorite NFL team here at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands. Doors are open. TVs are turned up. Drinks and food are absolutely flowing. Uh, so this is your personal invitation to get here and join us for all the football fun. You're going to enjoy two levels of bars, food service, dozens of massive screens playing all the games so you can bet and watch your favorite teams and players while making quick bets on dozens of self-betting machines and at the uh, friendly open windows here. You might even be able to see all of the self-betting kiosks behind me. Uh, grab your family and friends, get here, come out for an awesome time on Sunday or any day of the week. It's the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands, located right across the street and right across the parking lot, rather, from MetLife Stadium. Open seven days a week. Come on and join us. All right, now let's get to our best bets here. Our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and a total bet. We do this every single week. It's part of our weekly competition where each of the guys get 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. Got to be honest, it was a tough week for both of you guys the yes, last it week. Was. But it's okay. It happens to the best of us. Uh, time to turn around. Have some fun here. That's what it's all about. Pony, let's hear your, <laughs> yeah, your, your yeah. picks for week seven. Well, I'm going to double down on Cleveland, uh, getting the points against the Ravens, put half of my money, 50, on a spread bet. Kenyon Drake is the Ravens' leading running back rusher this late into the season. Something's broken with that Ravens offense, so I think this number is just too big. Give me Cleveland. For my money line pick, I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts. Last week, I bet against them. You know, the Titans have only scored 14 second-half points all season. They just shut down in the final 30 minutes. 
And the Colts did find something protecting Matt Ryan. No sacks last week. And then my last one, a $30 over bet on the Bucks and Panthers. Tom Brady, the wedding is now more than a week removed, Dave. He's fully concentrating on a bad <laughs> Panthers team with an interim coach. And I think that drives up a very low number. Look at that total, only 40 and a half. Yeah, I tried that last week. I played uh, over on the Steelers and, and the Bucks, and it didn't come through. So I'm staying away from that. But let's talk spread. And who are the Raiders? Chad said it earlier. Who are the Raiders to be favored by a touchdown against anybody? You know, Damian Pierce, the running back for the Texans, leads the league in broken tackles with 18. The Raiders aren't very good at tackling anyway, so I think he is going to go off and have a pretty big game. I'll take the seven points there. I'm playing the Broncos on the money line for $20. They're coming off of back-to-back -back losses in overtime. There's only been five times that's happened to a team since 2010, and those five teams came back the next game and are 4-0-1 against the spread. So even though they're losing, they're really playing hard, and I think they have the defense, like James said, to win that game. And as far as the total, you know what? Offenses stink right now in the NFL. There's about three good teams that have offense. Everybody else can't score, including the Packers and the Commanders. Last week, as a matter of fact, there are only three games that totals for 45 points or more. The last time there was less than that, week four of 2001. So there's something going on with offense right now in the NFL. It's hard for me to play any overs. I'm sticking with the under there. All right, great stuff. Some interesting strategies there for sure, guys. Uh, but we'll see which one is the best after this weekend. And we will, of course, as you know, air the results on next week's show. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook app now to place your bets before kickoff. And we move on here on More Ways to Win. It's week seven, and we're going to kick it off with you. Coming up, which of your favorites is going down this week? It's Moneyline Moneymaker time. James and Cole giving out their underdog upset special picks. This is one of my favorite segments featuring some big plus money plays. We're going to be right back here on FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. Thanks for hanging with us this week. And as always, we'll see you on the other side. Hey, everybody, welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. Always love having you with us. We're shouting out some of our betting markets with rapid fire predictions. Into fifth gear we go. Let's roll, guys. You know the drill. I'm going to give you the line. You give me your pick in 15 seconds or less. Dave, you're up first. The Packers, a four and a half point favorite at Washington. We've talked about on this show Tyler Heineke. Taylor Heineke, excuse me, starting for the Commanders. Who do you like? To me, it's impossible to trust the Packers laying points on the road right now. You know, Heineke won five of his last eight games as the starter last year for Washington. I think he has maybe something to prove that he should have been the guy and not Carson Wentz to begin the season. So I'll go with Washington. Okay, Pony, you're in Pittsburgh, the Steelers, at the Dolphins for Sunday night football. Hey, Miami is expecting to start to attack Valoa, who has missed the past two games in that concussion protocol. Pony, Pittsburgh is getting seven. Yeah, and I'm not convinced they can protect him after what I saw the Steelers do, even without T.J. Watt, with Cam Hayward up front getting after Tom Brady. That line is too big for a quarterback coming off all of that rust post that ugly scene in Cincinnati. I think the Steelers cover. Uh, Cole, you're in Chicago. We're going to come to you mm -hmm. for the Bears in Patriots game. Chicago getting seven and a half. How do you feel about that line? Well, Bill Belichick and George Hallis tied with 324 career victories. And uh, this is the game where Belichick moves into second place behind Don Shula. You see convincing win over Cleveland last week, 28 to 9 in the second half. They outscored him and uh, the Bears, the second ranked run offense in uh, Bill Belichick and Patriots. They're going to take that away as they always do. They win 28-17. Okay, from quick picks here to upset alerts, we're back on the money line and we're dropping money line money makers for you right now. And we're giving them the bet moji treatment. You're welcome. Hey, it's a ton of fun. Cole, I'm coming to you for your first upset pick. You're on the hot seat. And after your pick, the guys, of course, will react with the appropriate, appropriate emoji. No pressure. Give me your pick. Well, I eat pressure for breakfast. And uh, Sunday at noon Central Time, it's going to be the Mediocrity Bowl. It'll be broadcast on WKRP, so you may want to check it out. Les Nessman, he'll be on the call. Now, both squads, Atlanta and Cincinnati, they've won three of their last four since they dropped a pair to open up the season. But Atlanta, 
they, they seem to be the better team, surprisingly, of the two. And it hinges right now on that run game. Uh, four different players with rushing touchdowns and two have multiple house calls on the year. The Falcons, uh, well, uh, they've allowed close to eight points more per game in their three losses. And Sunday on enemy turf with Skyline Chili in the air, it's not going to be one of those ball games. Falcons, they win this one uh, by a four spot, 28-24. Look at that plus 220 right there on the money line. Guys. On, Boom. Dave. All good things James, must come we're... to an end. James, the James, Falcons have covered every week. <laughs> Not going to happen this week. Come on. Hey, Cole, I agree with you, man. Marcus Mariota, man, he is playing really good football, man. He's not tur he's not turning the ball over. He's running the football, utilizing his legs, putting his team in really good situation. And this this defense, man, they are playing hard. They kind of remind me of that Giants defense, man. Not a lot of big names over there, but they are flying around and they are making plays and getting after quarterbacks, right? This Cincinnati team, they can't find a run game. They, they depended on a quarterback and Jamar Chase to make big play after big play get themselves out of tough spots I don't think it happens against the Atlanta Falcons Thank you, James. an upset at home there for the Bengals uh, Falcons on top in that one but James what's your upset pick of this week seven well 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 the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> are in trouble right I'm taking the Niners Ooh. in this one the San Francisco 49ers at home getting big Trent back getting Bosa back this defense is going to put pressure on Patty Mahomes and make it difficult on him. And these are the type of games that we are going to start seeing the Kansas City Chiefs missing Tyreek Hill. You've seen it a little bit last week, right? When the game was on the line, he's trying to force balls to guys that he hasn't played a lot of football with. You've seen the pick to Sky Moore. You've seen in the Colts game, he finished with another pick trying to go down there and win the ball game. These are the type games against really good teams and really good defenses that we are going to start seeing the impact of Tyreek Hill not on that offense. I love the Niners defense at home. Jimmy G is going to make some throws. He's not going to turn the ball over. It is okay to punt. The Niners come out of here with a W at home and send Kansas City Chiefs packing. If I had emojis, I would, you know what I would throw up here. Um, what do you guys this, All over the board. Okay. Same San Francisco okay. Team that Pony, lost Pony. You picked the Niners Pony. already. I'm, I'm <laughs> laughing because this entire show is picked San Francisco. We're all selling Patrick Mahomes short, and I know it's funny because Lisa probably wants to cut all of our mics right now. <laughs> Yet, you know, I feel like it's like in a personal affront now. You guys are just jumping on this train here week seven. It's going to be a long season for me. Uh, all right, guys, awesome stuff. If you at home agree with Cole or James, hop on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now and get that plus money before these games kick off on Sunday. All right, coming up, can some big-name quarterbacks lead their team to big wins? Or, hey, at least cover the spread. We'll go with that. Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow. We just talked about those Bengals. Derek Carr, I'm talking about you guys. We're going to revisit. We're picking the rest of the NFL games on the schedule. Coming up next here on More Ways to Win. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you on the other side. We break down every game on this show, and we're going to hit the rest of the Week 7 slate right now. You see my guy Dave right there. The 3-3 three and three Seahawks are at the 4-2 and two Chargers. L.A., Dave, a big six-point favorite here. How do you play it? I think they deserve to be. Seahawks 3-3, three and three, that's very surprising, but they're not going to take their game on the road here. They, got, they lost to the Saints on the road. They got crushed by the Niners on the road. They did beat the Lions, but they're not coming into L.A. and beating the Chargers, and they're not even covering here. Give me uh, L.A. Okay, guys, let's get to Tom and Tampa Bay. Bucks 3-3 three and three on the road this week at the 1-5 and five Panthers. Cole, Tampa Bay is giving 10.5 here. It's the biggest spread of the week. How do you see it? Well, Tom, he's not going to anyone's wedding this weekend, so that's good news. And he also said that there's a lot of bad football being played out there. And his Bucks, uh, they're one of those squads playing bad football. They squandered uh, three of the last four games. But the Panthers... They dropped three in a row, and Baker still on the hunt for his fifth passing touchdown, four touchdowns, four interceptions. Uh, that's not going to do it. Uh, the Bucks, they will do it. They'll get it done 23-12 to 12 in this one. So. All right, let's talk about these Falcons again. They're in Cincinnati. Both of these two teams sitting there at 3-3. Three and three, Both have gotten the last three wins in the last four weeks. So, Pony, the Fatal Sportsbook has the Bengals as six-and-a-half-point home favorites. Who do you like? I would lay the points. Jamar Chase came alive against New Orleans. 
Two touchdowns, his breakout game of this season. And a big injury for Atlanta. Their star corner, A.J. Terrell, left their last game. If he's unavailable, I feel even better about the Bengals covering this number. All right, let's wrap this thing up with the Texans at the Raiders. Both teams have just one win on the season. Cole, Las Vegas is a seven-point favorite. Once a Raider, always a Raider. All right. Hey, off the bye right. week, we finna beat down the Texans, right, Raiders? I, I know everybody like Raiders playing bad. Ra- Raiders is about to get healthy. And when I say get healthy, that means put up a good 40 points at the cribber against the Texans after the bye. It's going to be a beat down. I'm taking the Raiders. I was calling for Cole, but I'll take you, James, any day. Thank you, my man. Hey, we've hit every game on the Week 7 slate. We've got so much more to come right here on More Ways to Win. Thanks for hanging with us on FanDuel TV. After this quick break, we're coming right back. It's Week 7. Let's go. All right, guys, we talked a lot about spreads, totals, money line wagers on this show, but there are a bunch of fun futures bets that we have to get to because they're available right now for you on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. So uh, let's make some quick picks on some of the most popular bets on the board right now. We're going to get right to it. Let's start with the 6-0 Eagles. Over or under 13.5 regular season wins. Pony, what do you think? Let's start with you. Yeah, I checked with somebody at FanDuel, and they projected the Eagles to only be an underdog in one more game, and that's against Dallas. That's it. So by that logic, yeah, they should go over 13 and a half. I would take him to beat that number, James. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. I mean, I'm not the only one that's been watching the Philadelphia Eagles win any way they want to win, whether it's a close game and they need defense, whether they need to put up big time points and they need offense. Jalen Hurts is playing at an elite level, an MVP level. I like the Philadelphia Eagles getting to that number. I'm, it's, it's hard to find a couple losses for this Eagles team. This might be their moment. Cole, this next one for you is a yes or no bet. Mm-hmm. Will the three and three Green Bay Packers make the playoffs? You see the odds on your screen right there. Well, Lisa, I am rolling with the yes variety because I don't trust the Vikings, the Bears, or the Lions as much as I trust Green Bay, despite what we've seen in a small sample size of six games. They still have four division games left, and as uh, the pride of Downers Grove, uh, Randy Poffo once said, oh, yeah, the dream is rising to the top, and that's what's <laughs> going to happen with the Green Bay Packers. I didn't have one of those small creamers. All I had was, was a large one. I'm going to say no. They've only, it's week seven. They've only played two road games, so they still have a lot of games left on the road. But they're one chance in. I don't think it's a wild card. I think you're right. If Minnesota collapses, it's them winning the division. But they're minus 154 in this spot. They're plus 260 to win the division. So if you truly do like them, that's the better bet. All right, you guys, you can place those bets right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And in addition to cashing in on the FanDuel Sportsbook app, you can also have some fun and make some easy money playing a new free game on the FanDuel Casino app. Yes, I know. Reward Machine, a daily free-to-play game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every single day. All you have to do is log in daily, spin for a free chance at rewards. It is that easy, so make sure to play Reward Machine for for a free chance at everyday wins only on the FanDuel Casino app. I know, hard to believe an hour just flew by. That is a wrap. Week 7 is here. We have got you ready. Check out all the bets we talked about here on this show and more on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And be sure to use that promo code MOREWAYS1000 on your first bet. And it gets better. We're here Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and right back next week. Enjoy the games.